Well, new developments out of Germany today where officials say the E. coli bug responsible for that deadly outbreak has been passed from human to human for the first time. That's uh, not good news. More than 3,000 folks have been sick in there, about a quarter of them gravely so. 39 have been killed. Perhaps the biggest unanswered question besides where did it come from is why is this happening? And why are the drugs that we have counted on for almost a century succumbing to these so-called superbugs? They don't work. The answer, according to the National Resources Defense Council and others, is because we overuse antibiotics as a standard issue food in factory farming. Yes, farmers give a healthy swab of antibiotics to every animal, healthy ones included, because it helps fatten them up and makes for cheaper, faster food. It's quite simply more profitable. But is it worth the cost in lives, let alone the cost of running a small gymnasium to train bugs to become lethal and totally repellent to anything we might use to fight them? Now, the NRDC is suing the FDA, demanding stricter oversight of the use of antibiotics on the farm, which brings us to today's specialist, Bob Deans, from the NRDC. And Bob, how bad is this? pretty bad, Dylan. I mean, if you think about it, Dylan, if you or I need tetracycline or penicillin, we need a doctor's prescription to get it. But if you're a farm animal, all you have to do is show up for breakfast because we feed 80 percent of the antibiotics in this country going not to humans, but to animals, not because they're sick, not because they need the medicine, but because it does help fatten them up for the slaughter. And the problem is when you overdo it with antibiotics, you promote the growth of these super germs that are resistant to antibiotics. They then make their way to humans through contact with animals or farm workers through the food that we eat or through contaminated water. As a result, we're getting sicker, we're staying sicker longer, we're going into the hospital more, and this is a real health crisis. Who says so? The American Medical Association, the National Institutes of Health, the Centers for Disease Control, the World Health Organization. That's why this practice is banned in Europe, it's banned in Japan, it's banned in Australia. We think Americans ought to have at least as much protection, so we've asked the courts to direct the Food and Drug Administration to protect Americans from this growing health crisis and stop this practice of feeding healthy animals antibiotics automatically in their feed just to fatten them up for the slaughter. Go ahead, Sam. Bob, let me ask you, isn't there also part of the problem uh, what we're feeding factory farmed animals? We're feeding them things that they're not normally used to eating and it's creating some E. coli inside them and so then the uh, antibiotics have to be introduced and we're putting them in situations and we're growing them in these factories that lead to, to things like infection so they need the antibiotics uh, and it's, so it's a, sort of a horrible self-fulfilling or uh, feedback loop here. Certainly when you have an industrial feedlot with 1,000 cows, uh, 2,500 pigs, 50,000 chickens, that kind of cramped unsanitary condition does lead to, the, uh, to bacteria development. And so some of this antibiotics are being used prophylactically to try and prevent this disease. But uh, vaccines would be more effective. And what we're saying is if old Bessie gets sick and needs a shot, that's fine. But to give this uh, antibiotics to healthy animals is threatening our children. It's making us harder for us to treat a sinus infection, um, E. coli breakout, salmonella, a staph infection. It's threatening our children. It's threatening our elders. It has to stop. Tim. One of the things that leads to factory farming is, in fact, federal regulation. You had all the biggest uh, agribusinesses supporting this Food Safety Enhancement Act recently. Um, and so on that front, do you think that if you, I don't know if you read Michael Pollan, if you follow the slow food movement, do you think that something like deregulation or at least trickling regulation down to the local level could help sort of discourage a factory farming trend that, that Sam was talking about? Well, certainly, Tim, that's a big issue. Our whole agribusiness industry and how that economy is run is a big, complicated affair. What we're saying is, in this case, the Food and Drug Administration has a responsibility to protect the public from this scourge. You know, we have 30 years of science. More than 100 independent researchers have concluded that this is a threat to health, and the FDA needs to respond. That's why we've gone to the courts, and we expect that to, uh, the FDA to act on that to protect people. Christian. Bob, just a quick question. I, I, think the, I think everything you say makes absolute sense, but you know, the one objection is going to be, is this going to make food a lot more expensive for people? So what's the cost? 
It won't. The National Academy of Sciences has addressed that, and it's a good question. They found out that about $13 a year would be the extra cost to consumers, uh, about the price of a couple of Happy Meals. Most parents I know would be happy to invest that in the health of their children. We're talking about pennies per pig. Uh, it's a good investment in our future. And the last question, Bob, is the biggest barrier to this, reduced profitability at factory farms? It's big farm. It's big farmer. That's what we're up against. That's why Congress has big enacted farmer. on this. That's why we're asking the Food and Drug Administration to step up its, to its statutory obligations, do its job, and protect Americans. And everywhere. you say big pharma because they're making a mint selling uh, standard antibiotics as uh, as milk for the cereal in the morning. Dylan, 80% of our antibiotics are going not to sick people, but to healthy animals on the farm. It oh. needs to stop. Terrible numbers. It's a good that uh, we have you, Bob, uh, uh, to uh, not only explain these things, but to file these lawsuits. Do keep us posted, Bob Deans at the NRDC.